Okay, hello. So, uh, this video uh, is slightly off topic. So, obviously most of the videos we've been watching already are about, uh, about the layout and construction of the layout itself. <coughs> this one is uh, a video about the couplings that I intend to use on my layout. So, I'm making this video. So, the vi hopefully this video will be watched by people that aren't just into railways, they may be into other things and they may be watching this as a, as a, as a curiosity so just a, a bit of a pointer, so for those of you that are familiar with uh, this type of coupling I'm sorry it probably might be a bit boring for you but I'm doing this for a little bit of everybody so uh, traditionally on our model railways we have uh, tension lock couplings so these are our normal tension lock couplings uh, I intend to use this type of coupling here so this is called a KD coupling so it's an American type design so Americans they uh, the American layouts uh, oh I'm sorry American railways use a, a Buckeye it's called a Buckeye type coupling so again it's not prototypical for British layouts but then nor is that really they don't really have that on normal railways so the idea being this will give us hands-free coupling and uncoupling of, of trucks and wagons so you don't get hands leaning over onto the railway so hopefully when the trucks come to a certain point of the track I'll be able to uncouple them and move them into position and it is quite good the way it works so we've got a, a little bit of a, a, a thing in the track here this is actually a magnet so this is actually a magnet so the idea being as the truck comes over the magnet I don't know if you can see that but it actually pulls the coupling to one side so if they're coming in from that way it will pull them the, the, the coupling one way when you come in from the other way it pulls the coupling the other way so the idea being they join up like that and then when they come over the magnet they uncouple like that Again, one of the things, and this is quite clever, I quite like the idea of this, one of the things they've designed into these couplings is the fact that once they're uncoupled over the magnet, you can then push the wagons back together, and they will push each other, you can push one of the wagons along without it actually recoupling, which I think is a brilliant idea. And I quite like the idea of that, of, of having that on my layout. But these couplings are quite sensitive to height, uh, where the magnet, so this wag magnet, where the magnet's set into the track, the height of the actual coupling itself, um, and these trip pins on the bottom. So these trip pins, so you could actually hear on that the trip pins rubbing on the on the actual magnet itself. But that's only on this on this bit of track I got here because this is just a, a little bit of a setup I've done just for this video. So. Um, the actual couplings themselves, fitting the couplings themselves, again, this is something that, hey presto, so this is something that is really good that the, the model railway manufacturers have actually thought about. So you can see on there, it's like a little swallow tail type thing, like a, a, a V tail on there. So that bit goes into the actual carriage itself. So the manufacturers have come up with this idea of making all the couplings the same, which is a godsend. So years and years ago, so I've got an old carriage here, so this is an old Triang carriage made by a company called Triang, you can see quite a chunky metal thing and it's it's riveted to the bottom of the carriage, bottom of the wagon, so there's not a great deal I can do about that. Um, I may try and convert some of them somehow, I don't know, I'll think about that in the future. <coughs> but luckily what I'm going to do for the time being, so this is a relatively new wagon, so this is made by a company called Backman. Um, it's a cattle truck because I've got the cattle dock on the layout, so I'm going to need some cattle docks for uh, cattle trucks for it. So you can see there. So that is the coupling itself. Okay, so it's screwed in this end, this end, and this is where it's quite handy. And this might go a bit wrong because it is quite tough to get them out. But they just oh, there we go. That was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So you can see they just pull out. Now that isn't that a good idea. Isn't that a good idea? So that means all we've got to do is get the new coupling and literally just push it in to place. So that makes the whole process a lot easier. 
So one of the other things they thought about, again, which is quite a good idea, so the actual couplings, so these are the, these are the companies, so it's made by a company called KD. These are actually American, so they are made by an American company. So you can see that says number 18. 18 is medium. So that is the length of the actual coupling itself. So over here, we've got a 19, and that is a long one. So they thought about that, so you can have different lengths if you want them closer coupled together, or what you've got to be careful of, I presume, is the gap between there and the buffer coupling itself. Because obviously if that is behind the buffer, then it'll mean the wagons will be too close together and they won't uncouple. So it is as simple as that. That is the fitting of it. The next thing you've got to do, <coughs> so you can see that that is quite low. That's going to catch on the magnet. So the next thing you have to do is find out what height it's got to be. Now, they've been very clever about that. Because they've actually produced this. So this is a gauge for them. So it serves two purposes. One, let me just get it a bit closer to the camera. One, you can set your coupling. You can set your coupling to the correct height. So if we look at that, we can see whether it's at the right height or not. So it should be in line with the coupling on there. Okay. We can also see whether the trip pin is too high or too low by the bit at the bottom so we can work all that out so that's quite good we can just uh, adjust it so by bending the trip pin on the bottom by bending this pin up or down very slightly we can adjust it for the correct height of the magnet <coughs> they've also thought about the height of the magnet itself so in here we've got a little uh, plate little uh, brass dowel so that goes all the way through to the other side so you can see it pushes up pushes up and down so the idea being you put that on the track so it's got two little cutouts on there the cutouts go on the track so you put that on the track over the magnet and if the magnet is set at the right height then that bit on the top should be flush so that pin should be flush with the top of the gauge. Cracking idea isn't it? Doesn't that work really well? So this is what I'm going to go for on my layout. So I've already put some magnets in place. So you can buy, so these are a flush mounted magnet. So these are designed, these are made for dummies like me that, that thought about this afterwards and thought, you know, I really fancy them. Well, it's a bit late now because I've put my layout together. So these are designed for idiots like me that have thought about this as a bit of an afterthought. So you can put these onto the track. They come in different sizes, <clears throat> so they come in different thicknesses. Uh, there is different size track available to us as modelers. So we have code 100 track, which is slightly taller, or code, a, uh, code 75 track, which is slightly uh, shallower track. It's meant to be more prototypical, it's meant to look more realistic. Um, Code 100 is what you get with your normal set track stuff like Hornby if you buy an off the shelf stuff, that's what it comes with. Code 75 is, is available separately and uh, it's meant to be more realistic so the, the rail is slightly thinner. Okay, so the actual height of the rail is slightly thinner. So you can see we need different size, um, different size, different height, different height uh, uh, magnets. So I've chosen one. And this is where it gets, uh, sorry, this is where it gets quite complicated. So you can see, I said code 75. So this track is actually code 75. They don't do code 75, so it's code 83. So this is designed to an HO scale. So HO is is uh, an American scale, it's a European scale. Uh, we tend to do double O scale, so that's why there's a difference in that. I'm sure somebody will probably be able to tell you the exact measurements and the exact standards of it if you ask, but because um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm not familiar with the proper sizes off the top of my head. So obviously the size of the magnet is one of my you made earlier. So that the magnet would be thicker if it was code 100. So that is literally the difference in them. So it's thinner code, thinner magnets for that. You can also buy a magnet that will go under the track. So if you were clever or if you'd thought about it in advance, you would merely mount the magnet into the, the board, whatever you're putting it onto. So it'd be a little more hidden, it would, it would blend in more. So you could put it under the track, put the track on top, make sure you protect the magnet from glue and that, put a bit of uh, cling film on it or something, 
and then you could just pull your your ballast on the top so it'd look a little bit more realistic <clears throat> the other thing they make is uh, an electronic one uh, not an electronic it's, a, it's a, a, a an electromagnet one as well so you'll have a, a magnet bolted to the bottom of the baseboard um, with an electromagnet in it so if anything passes over it it'll be fine until you energize it and then it'll become magnetic like a, a, a relay coil or similar sort of thing okay so that is what we're going to go for so we're going to move away from the conventional tension lock couplings okay and we're going to put in these these KD couplings so uh, again I, I, I quite like the idea of this because it means we're going to have hands-free coupling so you can see when they cut the trucks go together you can push them and pull them along quite good when you get over the magnet so you just move over the magnet reverse the, the, the wagon up slowly with the clumsy remove, reverse the wagon up slowly with the train and then because the couplings have now come apart you can then push the wagon along without it recoupling and then once you go over them once you've gone past the magnets they reconnect sim quite simply so looking at that <clears throat> like that for me I just like the idea of it yeah and I'm, I'm gonna see if I can get it to work it may be and I'm mitigating failure and I may end up going back to the tension lock and getting the hand of God coming in over the top but I intend to persevere with it because I do like the idea of it uh, what I'm going to do with some of the older trucks because I have got some older trucks that I want to do um, I'm not actually sure I have bought some uh, loose fitting couplings so these uh, let me just find the packet so these are uh, these are like an open ended coupling so it's a coupling without any without, without that swallowtail bit on the end and it's just got a hole in it so there's a possibility I may be able to put them onto the older wagons somehow. I like, don't doubt for one minute there is probably modellers out there that have done it already. Um, they're more than willing to send me a, a message if, they would, if they've done it already and they can give me some pointers. I'm more than willing to learn on that one. Um, but again, it, I mean, all it's going to do is just it will just hopefully screw onto there somewhere, I presume. Or I can make a to make a, uh, an epoxy some plastic in there so I can screw it into there somehow I don't know I, I'll see how I get on but the, the layout itself so the layout's got to be done by May so this um, is waiting for the minute I'm just showing you a video on it briefly just so I show you what I'm doing this is gonna have to wait until further down the line because I've got to make sure the layout works and I've got all the, the, the scenery done before we, we attend the exhibition so uh, just a little bit of a video on, on on the on the couplings so hopefully you find it of use and hopefully you find it may interesting okay thank you very much bye bye